We're going to look at our, we're going to look at your guys' first graph, stabs at your graphs um, in a second. But first, I just want to, want to run through a few other examples of, uh, you know, what's a good graph, what's a bad graph. So what I want to say is what little exercise we're going to do is you guys are going to, um, we are going to make our own rubric for what, as how we evaluate our graphs here. So you guys are going to pull up this paper and you're going to start taking notes. And so when we say, we make these different comments about these figures, we'll start with some examples that we have here and then we'll transition into your figures. Um, I want you guys to, to help us figure this out. Now the rubric will have, you know, scores. So from really cruddy to really good, you know, so four is awesome, one is horrible. Um, the things we want to evaluate are, are several. So one is the content, one is the actual data. Is the data presented well, all this and that. Two is the design. What's the layout, you know, are the, what are the issues they're having with their, with their figures? Is, is the font large enough? Is, there enough white space, those, those questions. And then thirdly, sort of separate from both those, is it you know, together, is it all together? Does it have all the parts? Is it complete? Does it have a title? Does it have a legend and, and all that? Does that make sense? So as we go through these next things and we bring up a topic, a subject, you guys jot that down. And then for every time we see that in a graph, we're gonna, I want you to put a tick mark by it and we're gonna see which are the problems that were the, mo which were the most common errors which are the least common errors? Make sense? Okay. So let's skip that. So for example, this is um, this is a type of graph we were just talking about, a radar diagram. And yeah, never mind. Let's let's go to let's start with this one. Let's start with this one. Okay, stare at this. So for all these cases, you guys stare for a second. We'll wait, you know, 15, 20 seconds. You guys look at it, see if you can interpret what's going on, see if you can orient yourself. And then we'll start talking about how we can make it stronger. Right. So Chris is saying this is some measure of plant diversity, plant richness, and some, some various array of plots. Over time, right? X-axis is year. Going from the left, 1960, to not quite 2010. Lisa? I'm just going to critique it. Yeah. Why can't you see the native box? Background. Number one, don't have a crappy background. Write that down. No photo backgrounds. Ever. Exclamation mark. Ever. So check it out. So this is a, this is a, a field. Uh, this is UCLA in the 1960s. It's a great picture. Uh, look, <laughs> oh my God, that was so mean. Okay, so, but check it out. Black and white photo, all low, resu low resolution photo, so it's a little pixelated, so it's a little bit of dark, a little bit of light, a little bit of flick. And one of the symbols, the non-native symbols, is in and of itself a dark and white flecked thing, right? So that's just, I mean, what? Lame choice. That's right. So, okay. So first and foremost, don't have a, a pattern background. Don't have a, a photograph uh, behind your stuff. That's one. Um, two, uh, what, what about the title? What about the title here? Good, bad, and different? The title of what? <laughs> well, if you have to ask me, it's probably not a good title, right? So, species richness on the y-axis, time on the, or year, yeah, same thing, on the x. Generally speaking, you would put the title above the figure. I mean, clearly there's some kind of layout thing that they're going, with, going for here. Um, so, but, but generally speaking, you want to have it right above. Um, what's, the, what's the pattern? What's the interpretation of this data? What happened? We don't know exactly, what the, exactly where they're measuring or how, but what's the trend? Like Clear plus hatched equals black is, what, is what, what's going on here. 
I mean, I mean that, that, whether they communicate, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's what it was. So Joanna's right. So we're, so we're talking about um, additive. These are the components. So there's ways to do that. Uh, for example, this could be white. This could be black. This could be gray. Right? That would visually reinforce that this is a component of, of this. Right? Or if this was like, let's say, I don't know, a downward pointing triangle, and this was an upward pointing triangle, so it made a square. Or you know, so there's other visual clues that aren't required, but it would, but it would sort of help convey that this is a component or half of this other thing. Yeah. Who do you think made this graph? <laughs> not me. I should say these are all real graphs. These are not. I didn't fake any of these up to show you guys anything. So this was made by your Pentagon in a presentation to Congress. So this is what they went in front of. <laughs> There's so many levels of that. But um, so this was at a presentation about why we should justify taking down forces in Iraq. So what the heck? I don't know. Strategic overwatch. It's just weird stuff going on here. Um, so there's, there's y the units, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 20. You know, what is that? Right? There's, so clearly, as we can tell, this is a line graph, so that it's meant to be linear. So here's something that happens in, in 2007, early or mid, and then late 2007, and then mid 2008. So trying to say, you know, bang, the stars are, I don't know, freaking out or something. This star is kind of unsure what it is, and this one's unsure what it is. And so this is supposed to make some kind of argument or some kind of point, right? Hard to understand. No labeling at all to any axis. But 20, what's 20? I don't know. 20 is something. You know, obviously that's related to troop numbers, probably. Is that 20,000? It's at 20 hundred, you know, it, it's hard to know. All kinds of crazy colors, uh, all kinds of weird shapes and bizarre lame clip art. Yep, I know, it's real. Okay, what about this? What's going on here? What? That could be something for Yes. All right, so Shelby got that this is Louisiana and Florida. Is it a watershed? No. Yes, I believe it is. So first and foremost, you shouldn't be guessing. Your job as the graphic maker is to help us make things clear. I suppose it's possibly reasonable for folks to know you're in the southern U.S., but let's help them out, right? Let's have a little larger map of the U.S. or, or, or the Gulf of Mexico or something like that, right, to orient us. Two, there's, a, bunch, there's a, a big green thing in there, presumably some kind of, it's not, a, it's not actually a real watershed because if it's the Mississippi, that would drain 40% of the U.S., but is it kind of looks like something maybe like the Tennessee Valley something like that maybe there's a bunch of black dots in there what the heck are those is that where we measured rainfall is that where we sprayed pesticide who knows right so we don't know we can't tell what this is it's got a scale bar <laughs> it's got a scale bar that sucks look at that sucky scale bar the person didn't even say anything, they didn't even try to help you understand the distance. Look, it goes from zero to 140 miles. First it's in miles, don't do that, write that down. We wanna be metric, not using metric. Two, it's a map that doesn't have any orientation or, or you know, stuff like that. Has a bunch of symbols on there that aren't labeled, that aren't articulated. Another way you can say that is no legend. But then look at that scale bar again, it's going from what? Zero to 140 miles? What lameness is that? It should go to zero to 100 miles. 
or 0 to 150 miles. I guarantee what happened was this was laziness. This person barfed out a scale bar and ArcGIS randomly said, er, 140. So because of that, look at the divider. Zero, there's a tick at 35. 35 miles, are you kidding me? That's stupid, right? So a little bit, a few, just a minute or two of, wait, let's make this make you know, a larger, you know, more, cons more coherent divider, et cetera. So they have scale bar, that's good, they have that, but let's do a little bit more. We have, we have an uh, orientation arrow, right? So we know which way is north, south, so that's good. But the rest of it is we don't know what the heck's going on here. Did you choose that background? I, I didn't make this <laughs> slide. This is all, all this stuff is real. All this stuff is real. Get ready? Ready? Hold height. Hold yourself. Hold. Oh. Now, just like, just like you're not allowed to insert a Google uh, map, because that's lame, you, you now are all sophisticated. You know how to make ArcGIS maps. You are only allowed to use ArcGIS maps. Similarly, now that we've talked about tables, you guys will make a real table. You won't do some baloney like this, like copy some Excel bad word and paste in that bad word like that. That's what this guy did. Like, pff, whatever. I don't know. Copy, paste. Boom. There's my thing. How about this? So let me tell you what this. This is a big, huge, gigantic, probably double, two-fisted middle finger to the audience. This literally says, screw you. That's exactly what this says. Your goal is to make something, I'm not kidding, that's exactly what this says. This says, I don't care about you. This says, I don't care about you understanding what I'm doing. This says, I don't even care enough to have my thing organized. You're stupid and I, it doesn't even make me, I don't even need to be professional for you. Incredibly insulting. So, now, even if we don't know what this is about, let, let's just leave that aside for a second. Look, right here. They can't even have their text lined up, right? It's on top of each other. Even if we knew what these um, coding values, this is different molecular biology, so it kind of doesn't really matter. It's lame stuff. But, um, but even if we knew what that meant, we couldn't read it. It's on top of itself. Even if we knew what these things meant, icky row, what, you know, I don't know, it's like a white stripes song or something. But even if we knew what that meant, look it, it's not even lined up. So even if this is in Chinese and you guys looked at this, you would visually see this. This, this sticks out to you. Just like this does. Look, this is, and then wop, and then wop, and then wop. Right here, look it. These are all lined up good, 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 wop, 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 right? Super sloppy. They don't care about you. They couldn't even bring themselves to make their numbers line up. Do you really think this person did a good job at doing their experiments? I don't. Do you really think they're trying to communicate information to you? I don't, right? So don't be that person. Don't be that person that doesn't care about elegant presentation, putting work into it. Even if you don't always succeed, it's clear that you're trying. This person didn't even try. Okay, good. So first, Mary said, first, we don't know what the we don't know what the, the center point here is, nor what these bars represent. Is that median? Is that mean? Is this max min? Is this, is this standard deviation? So we need to label it. You guys should be putting that down. That's another tick mark. Yeah. Okay, so that's one. What else? Bad coloring. Bad. <laughs> Bad coloring is gentle. That's nice. Chase is very polite. But yes, I would use the term insane coloring or like Easter Bunny on acid or something, right? <laughs> so there's, firstly, there's some kind of weird Space Invaders landscape going on down here. Where I don't know what that is. And so that's distracting, right? Even if we did this, if this is a mountain, if I was trapping critters in the mountain and somehow I, I thought that, oh, it's a mountain, it's, I worked in the mountains. That's adding visual distraction because there's nothing here and it's down here and it's making my, it's drawing my eyes down there. So one, we said, don't have a patterned background. Generally speaking, 
get rid of all this other gunk that sometimes people want to put around the edge of your figures, okay? So get rid of that. Then, then is Chase talking about colors? So then there's, so it's, it's purple, then it's black, then it's blue, then it's other purple, right? What is up with that, right? More visual distraction, more visual clutter that's drawing our eyes away from the data. So just get rid of all that and just have white, uh, you know, axis, white tick marks and stuff like that. What else? There's so much to talk about in this graph. Chris. Ooh, good call. So check it out. Chicky chalk check uh, goes, this is percent. And this goes a minus five. So that happened, I suspect, because they use an automated graphing routine. And because the error bars here, which extended past zero, past the origin, it therefore said, oh, we have to be able to sh display this thing. So therefore, we'll put it down here, right? Now, this wasn't uh, you know, per capita GDP or something, which can go negative. This is supposedly something about trapping success. So this is negative. This is saying that instead of catching critters, we, bur <laughs> we gave birth to critters or something, right? So that doesn't make any, now mathematically, you can generate that number and that's a valid number. But ecologically, in the real world, these instances don't mean anything to us. You can't negatively trap something. So what we should do is define our range, the lowest part, to be zero, right? And so that's just gonna, like, let's, let's assume this is standard error or whatever. We would just interpret that as we could not distinguish these number of critters from zero critters. Okay, but we wouldn't drive the we wouldn't drive the uh, y value into negative. So that's one part. What else about this axis do you guys have issues with? That's right. So the percent is lame. So they probably had some black texted word, and they try to obliterate it by pasting in over this percent. Because see, the year is actually pretty clear, but the percent is sort of like double double something. So that was not using the appropriate labeling, either with a text box or whatever the thing was. And again, just made this gunky, hard to read, blurry. And yeah, this, yeah, it looks like it looks like you got something on your glasses or contact or something. What else? Check, is some other hands up? Yes. So the implication 93, 94, 95, 96, wait, no, 95 and a half, 96 and a half. So this is not evenly spaced. So this was most likely these values were being, are being perceived by the graphing program as text and not as a numeric value. So this is going in as random value one, random value two, random value three, random value four, and it's not actually putting it on a, on a numerical scale. And so we wanna make sure we don't have that problem. Also, it's year, I would get rid of year and just put 1993, 1995, 1996, right? Then I don't have to have year. Skunk and Fox, I would take S-K-U-N-K put it right here in pink or salmon, whatever this color is. And then over here, I'd write F-O-X in yellow. So it would be clear that this is the fox and this is the skunk and then eliminate the need for this legend. Don't even need that legend, right? And then trap success is, you know, I need some, we need a more descriptive title there. So trapping success in, I don't know where this is, San Jacinto Mountains, you know, something like that. Cool? All right, so get one more and then we'll drop to, we'll go start looking at your guys' stuff. Okay, so this is, uh, this is from a, a news article I grabbed today. When I did the screen grab, I unfortunately, my, I apologize, my, my cursor was hovering right here, so it, it came up as, a, as, a, uh, as this little yellow text box. That's my fault. It's not the original graph's fault. But have a look at this. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what you think about it. Okay, good. So, so lobster landings and then parentheses, the units, metric tons and parentheses. Okay, that'd be good. Other things. Yeah, Mary. We don't really use the lines the values around 
Ooh, okay, so Mary's comment is you don't need the lines because the the magnitude of the of the the bar is already there. I would say it's probably still good to have the lines, but you're right, you don't absolutely need them. Um, but they all, they do help a little bit. So so um, given they have the numbers, you don't absolutely need them, but generally speaking, I think they help. But you're right, you could get away with just leaving those off. Chris? I noticed with some there's uh, a comma and then others there's Yes. So check it out. All these guys, 10,000, 10,000, 10, 10, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, Green and red. Colorblind folks will have a tough time with that. Now, uh, colorblind sometimes screws with some of our aesthetic interests. Let's imagine this was uh, lobsters caught in Red Canyon and this was lobsters caught in Green Canyon. There might be a natural, you know, hey, you know, that color is obviously associated with the place name. Or this was people going really fast. This was people stopping. You know, there might be some, again, some natural reasons why we won't want to pick those colors. So that's fair enough. But would, if we don't absolutely need to have those colors in one graph, probably pick different colors. Or again, let's say the colors really, we like them for whatever reason or needed them. We could do something like have this be green and have this be red, but be red stippled or red banded or something. So even folks that are colorblind they can still distinguish these subgroups, these these uh, symbols from uh, other ones. On the colorblind note, it makes it really difficult with uh, backgrounds. You have like a red That's right. background with a purple line. Yeah, that That's right. That's right. Oh no! <laughs> Are you allowed to make a pie? A, 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 yeah, no, you're not. Oh my God! You're definitely not allowed to do a pie chart. Oh my God! Oh my God. All right. No, seriously, do not ever do a pie chart. They're really, really bad. Right? So much better stacked bar graph if you guys want to be comparing subgroups. Okay, let's take a look at your graphs. Okay. 